Chapter 4, Biology of the Cell, Part 3. We are now moving from the plasma membrane to the cytoplasm, which is everything between the nucleus and the plasma membrane. This includes the fluid called the cytosol. So the cytosol it has a high water content, but even though it does, it is still a very viscous fluid, it's sort of more like a gel, kind of like um, toothpaste. It has many, many dissolved macromolecules and ions within it. Also found in the cytosol are the organelles. Organelles organize structures, and these stru organelles have unique shapes and special functions. So first up for our organelles is the endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum is uh, extensive interconnected membranes going from the nucleus out in throughout the cytoplasm. And it goes all the way out and comes close to the plasma membrane. Um, the rough endoplasmic reticulum is the part that is bound with ribosomes. So rough endoplasmic reticulum is bound with ribosomes, therefore it is involved in protein production. So it produces membrane-bound proteins, those proteins found in the plasma membrane. It produces proteins that are to be secreted outside of the cell and it produces enzymatic proteins for the lysosomes, special dangerous proteins that need to be kept isolated. What happens is the rough endoplasmic reticulum produces its proteins and then transports them via vesicle to the Golgi apparatus. It also turns out that the organelle peroxisome, the organelle peroxisome is formed from the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum is a continuation from the rough endoplasmic reticulum, so they are one continuous structure. And its job has nothing to do with proteins because there's no ribosomes. Instead, it's involved in synthesis, transport, and storage of lipids. Of the lipids. It also has a role in carbohydrate metabolism, breaking down and um, building up macromolecules made of carbohydrates. And it even has a role in detoxification of drugs, alcohols, and poisons. So, Smooth endoplasmic reticulum has a role in detoxing various substances. And that means there's a lot of smooth endoplasmic reticulum in liver cells. Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus is composed of a collection of elongated, flat, sac-like membrane structures, kind of like a big stack of uh, pancakes. And the function of the Golgi apparatus is that it receives uh, vesicles from the rough endoplasmic reticulum that are filled with proteins. And then the Golgi apparatus will modify those proteins, repackage and sort them, and then sit them out through other vesicles. So it'll add things like phosphate groups to proteins or carbohydrates to proteins, package them, sort them, and send them out to form either secretory vesicles going to the plasma membrane or to form lysosomes. So the Golgi apparatus is kind of like the post office receives, processes, packages, sends out. So here is uh, transport vesicles going from the rough endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi apparatus. It'll then send the proteins to the various layers of the Golgi apparatus. And then some of those will become vesicles that travel to the plasma membrane, fuses with it, carrying membrane-bound proteins. Some will carry secretory vesicles going to the plasma membrane, fuse with the plasma membrane, and secrete proteins and some of them will become the lysosomes. Lysosomes. Lysosomes are small membrane sacs, modified vesicles, basically. They're filled with digestive enzymes that break down all kinds of macromolecules. And they can be involved in digestion of contents of um, vesicles that are carrying materials from phagocytosis. They can be uh, sent to worn out non-functioning organelles to break down those organelles. That's referred to as autophagy. And lysosomes can be involved in destroying the entire cell, autolysis. Tay-Sachs disease. Tay-Sachs disease is a genetic disorder that involves lysosomes. In Tay-Sachs disease, there is one enzyme, one digestive enzyme in the lysosome that's either missing or non-functioning. And because of this, fatty material accumulates in nerve cells of the child born with this disorder. Uh, symptoms usually start when the child's around six months old. Over time, they will 
suffer paralysis, blindness, deafness, and are usually dead by age four. So it is a very severe genetic disorder, a recessive genetic disorder. All right, moving on to peroxisomes. Peroxisomes, like lysosomes, are modified vesicles. Uh, peroxisomes tend to be a little smaller than lysosomes. Peroxisomes are also filled with enzymes. This time, enzymes involved in functions such as detoxification, specifically neutralizing substances that our cells produce as a dangerous waste byproduct. So, for instance, breaking down hydrogen peroxide that the cell produces through various metabolic processes, breaking it down into water that's safer for the cell. Uh, also engages in oxidation of fatty acids, so it'll break down fatty acids into acetylcoenzyme A that can enter cellular respiration. And peroxisomes are in higher concentrations in the liver where, again, lots of detoxification occurs. Mitochondria. Mitochondria is shaped sort of like a bean. It has two membranes, an inner uh, mitochondrial membrane and an outer mitochondrial membrane, so it's double membraned. And it is, of course, where aerobic cellular respiration occurs. This is where massive amounts of ATP is produced. So this is the powerhouse of the cell, mitochondria. Ribosomes. Ribosomes do not have membranes. They are non-membrane bound organelles. They're basically large complexes of proteins and RNA, ribonucleic acid. So our RNA represents ribosomal RNA. Um, some of the ribosomes are bound to the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum, form, helping to form the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Um, other ribosomes are free. They are floating in the cytosol, synthesizing lots of proteins the cells need out in the cytosol. So again, ribosomes, whoops. Protein RNA struct co complexes found free or bound to rough endoplasmic reticulum. Proteasomes. Proteasomes are another kind of protein complex, kind of a large protein complex found in the cytosol. The job of the proteasomes is to break down other proteins, so protein digestion. So proteasomes will basically act like a shredder. Protein goes in one end, amino acids and Peptide fragments come out the other end. And this is a way to get rid of damaged proteins, if proteins have been sold correctly, or proteins the cell just doesn't need anymore. Cytoskeleton also lacks a membrane. Proteasomes lack a membrane. Cytoskeleton lacks a membrane. Cytoskeleton is a collection of long protein filaments that are spread out throughout the cytoplasm of the cell. It has lots of functions. It's involved in intracellular support, helping to hold structures, organelles in place. It helps to organize the organelles, keep them in place, allow movement within the cell, acts like a highway inside the cell. Uh, very important in cell division, allowing the cell to divide, and also um, movement of cellular structures. So again, extensive all throughout the inside of the cell. Um, they even uh, end up getting anchored to the plasma membrane, so the cytoskeleton does attach to different points in the plasma membrane. The three main kinds of uh, protein filaments, we have the microfilaments, the intermediate filaments, and the microtubules. Microfilaments are uh, interlaced network, very meshy-like, very interconnected to each other. Uh, they tend to be right under the plasma membrane on the cytoplasmic side of the plasma membrane. Um, so they help to maintain the shape of the cell since they're there on, at the surface. Uh, they help to support and form microvilli. They're involved in um, this division of the cell into two cells during cytokinesis. Uh, they help to move uh, movement in the cytoplasm and important for muscle contractions. We have intermediate filaments. Intermediate filaments function primarily in supporting cells structurally to help give stress cells their shape and to stabilize the cell junctions where cells are connecting to other cells. So intermediate filaments are very important where things like desmosomes and hemidesmosomes and um, so forth. Um, intermediate filaments can be made from a bunch of different kinds of proteins. So for instance, in our skin, hair, and nails, the intermediate filaments are made of a protein called Keratin. 
And so they're sort of scattered all throughout. There's not as many of them. They're not as dense as the microfilaments you're kind of seeing here in light blue. Then we have microtubules. Microtubules are actual tubes. They're hollow cylinders. They stretch along the surface of the cell, but also throughout the cytoplasm. So they're involved in maintaining cell shape, helping to move and organize organelles. They form components of the cilia and the flagella. Um, they're very important in the movement of vesicles inside the cell. They act as a freeway that vesicles move along. And they're also important in separating chromosomes during cell division. The three kinds of protein filaments for the cytoskeleton, microfilaments, intermediate filaments, and microtubules, small, medium, large. Here's some sort of uh, some views. So here is a um, fluorescent glowing. You see the nucleus is glowing in blue. In the yellow, green here, yellow, green is the microtubules and in the red around surfaces is the microfilaments. So again, nucleus, microfilaments underneath the plasma membrane, microtubules all throughout the cytoplasm. Centrosome, centrosome, another important organelle does not have a membrane. The importance of the centrosome is that it organizes and produces microtubules. So no centrosomes, then no microtubules. Um, they're Centrosomes are best known, best observed in their function in during cell division. They form the mitotic spindle, little spindle fibers that go out and move chromosomes. When you look at a centrosome, you see that it has two uh, sets of these cylinders, protein cylinders, referred to as centrioles. So you have a pair of centrioles founded in the centrosome. That brings us to the nucleus. Nucleus is the largest organelle, largest structure in the cell. It is the control center because it houses the DNA, the genetic code. Most cells only have one nucleus, although there are exceptions. As rhethorcytes, the red blood cells have no nuclei, and skeletal muscle cells have many, many nuclei. So the nuclear envelope is around the outside of the nucleus. It is a double membrane, two layers of phospholipid bilayers. Uh, there are um, little gaps within the nuclear envelope called nuclear pores. These are formed by proteins allowing large structures to go into or out of the nucleus. And the overall job of the nuclear envelope is to separate the cytoplasm from the nucleus. Also within the nucleus is a dark uh, shaded structure called a nucleolus. So in the nucleus is the nucleolus. The nucleolus is where the subunits, the parts of the ribosome, are formed. So the nucleolus makes the parts of the ribosome, those parts go out into the cytoplasm, and then assemble to become active ribosomes. And that is it for this part of the lecture.